Okay, we fucking did it. We're well, here. Welcome back to Emo Night Radio. I'm here with Tyler Posey. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So it's live and we can swear. We are we live. Are, yeah. We can swear. We can also take calls, but I'm going to use that at your discretion. I would love I would love to take some calls if we if you're down. Dude, we're totally down. I just don't want anybody to call you and be like ask about something that you don't want to talk about. You're gonna. We're gonna have to sidebar it real quick, Cameron. Right, you'll, right, you'll have right, to right, right. use your to use the thing. Oh, I have no problem hanging up on people. Fe- Fem, you want to say hi? If you're here, Fem is here too. What's up, everybody? I, wow, listen to that voice. I know. I can't even hear my voice. Well, it sounds. So, I have allergies. Forgive me. I gotta tell you. So great. It's I love. I literally love the sound of my voice in a in a <laughs> fucking in a fucking microphone and in headphones. I think that. That I sound so fantastic, and it's so yeah, hard right. for me to not do this. ASMR. Uh, wow. See? Yeah, you're gonna have to. Actually, you, know what, you ever see Friends where Phoebe gets sick? Yes. She sounds sexy. She has yeah. allergies right now, so it's, that's what's going on. It's, it's the sexy, <laughs> sultry. So I, I um, I don't know if you you guys know this, but there's a lot of like Vanderpump drama that I don't really know anything about. Vanderpump the. Drag show? The ra- the, I, do you know I what I'm talking about? I don't watch this show, but like I've seen a bunch of it online and I'm confused. Okay, so let me, the why, why I bring it up is because I didn't know shit about it. And TJ and the rest of Emo Night really, really loves it. And the way that they described what's happening to me is they said, imagine if Phoebe was cheating on, or okay, I'm sorry, Monica was cheating on- On Chandler. On Chandler- for seven years, but Ross knew, and that's <laughs> that's the way it's been described to me. So it's like I, but you want to know what happened? Yeah, I don't yeah. even know. I have uh, no idea. Okay, I don't know either. That's about as far as I know. But I heard people, my the person that I go and get coffee from every morning, like talking shit, who I have a really big crush on, honestly, by the way. Awesome. Woo! I really do, and I haven't had a chance. I hadn't I haven't figured out how to get her number yet. But I heard them talking shit this morning. I was like, "What are you guys talking about?" And this is how I introed myself into it. And she, I was like, I have a PowerPoint presentation that my business partner sent to me. And I was like, would you like to send it to yourself? And that is how I got her number. And I don't know her name, but I do have her number. That's all you need. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Hell Emo yeah. Night Radio. Hey, thank you. Um, it's good to be here, finally. I know. I, I really appreciate it. Not, not finally in the sense of like, we were waiting for a long time. But, but also just in finally. general, it's, On, I've been dying to do this with you. So uh, It was really nice to see you the other night at Emo yeah. Night. It was really nice to see you. Thank you guys that was for so fun. doing that. She killed it. Oh you, my God, I had so much fun. I know your playlist fucking slurred. I chugged that Red Bull and I was I was like, let's go. <laughs> I know. I watched I watched from the back and I was like, wow. Really? I have to I was like, I, I literally told this to TJ while, while we were uh while you were doing it. I was like, well, I don't know how to follow that. I was like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to do that. Yeah, it was pretty it was the it was one of the best Let me put it this way. I've ever seen. I had people coming up to me at a birthday party the next night. And someone was like, hey, you weren't by any chance like DJing last night at Emo Night, were you? And I was like, I actually was. And they were like, dude, get low. I went crazy. Look at my knees. I was in the mosh pit. That shit was insane. Dude, it was, it's, it took a second to get started. I don't know why everybody like got in a little bit the later. the crazy frog intro. It, my and then it was one of the most wild ones I've, I've been to in a while. I, that was the first time I've been to it in that location. I, I haven't been to that one yet. It's really, it's a, it's. Dude, it's wild. There's like dancers on the wall. Oh, it's yeah. incredible. The neon dancers. It's insane. It's a full on, <laughs> like, rave. It has a mind of its party. own. I know. We like did, and just, whatever. I don't want to talk about us. Enough talking about us. You guys drove all I'm the way here. Madly impressed, though. What the fuck have you been up to? I want to know all about. Let's talk about music. I don't want to talk about anything else I would but love that. It. I yeah. don't. And I got to tell you, I honestly know you as a friend and a musician. I don't know you as anything else. It's great. That's okay. So what the fuck have you been doing? <laughs> um, yeah, I've uh, I've been like doing this album for like over a year, oh, well over a year, like two three years. So I was with Feldy's label. Hey, hold on, it, can I can I interrupt you please. in between this so I can get some questions answered? Yes, absolutely. By yourself, it's Tyler Posey. It's just Tyler Posey. Now. Okay, got no band name. Um, when I was still with Feldy at Feldy's label, Big Noise, we decided during COVID. My drummer was stuck in Australia, and then my bassist became a firefighter. So it was really only me writing music. And as much as I, you know, love band names, I grew up listening to pop punk. Fucking, I always was like trying to come up with fun band names, and I love that aspect of the creativity of doing a band. But it just seemed like the right move. I was the only one writing music, kind of. And then 
Um, my name has a bigger following than any band name I could fucking think of anyway. So. It's true. So I was like, let's let's go with, let's ride with that for a while. And there are elements of of having a band name that I miss because it feels like mm-hmm. sort of a rite of passage in this punk world that I'm trying to sort of be a part of. Well, I mean, I feel like you are a part of it. Thanks, like, dude. I feel yeah. like you are a part of it. You're You're not like somebody who's come into this from like you because you thought it was cool now no definitely not you've no, been i've been playing i've been playing in out of like a garage but punk band since i was like 11 and 12 and um was always this was always my scene and now finally people are kind of switching over to that scene i mean when you when you were there um people were asking about your music like when you were there at emo night they're asking more about your music than anything else that you have been doing yeah. and I I got to tell you the song that I know how you've changed as a musician just from listening to the previous stuff cuz I used to get all the demos right from right, everything right, right, right. and I can tell you how I think that you've changed vocally and how how you've changed as a writer but how like so from switching out from fucking being in a band to being your own thing uh-huh. how how is this different like how how do you feel like this is different? I don't approach any of it differently. Um, I think I just have more freedom. The last band that I was in, all the dudes were like, "This is your thing. You could whatever you say. We'll we'll end up doing." Um, did you? So it always kind of felt like my thing. A did you bit. want it? Did you, did they? When you got those guys in that band, was that something that you went to into it like that, or was that something that when they were in there? I like, think I did a little bit. Like so, my bassist, who's one of my best friends that I grew up with since I was like twelve years old, he was my tour manager and my photographer for my last band, and that. Preview, the first band dynamic was everyone was trying to be the front man and there was too many cooks in the kitchen and there were arguments and all that shit um, and so f- when I left I was like I think I, I know what I want I know how to work with people and, and, I, and I feel like I have a strong vision um, that I don't want to compromise uh, but I still would do it in like a way where I'd feel make everybody feel collaborative you know so my bassist who was my tour manager my photographer knew that that's how I wanted to start this next project and then my drummer was just down for anything so we had this dynamic of kind of me calling the shots um, but I still asked them for their opinions on shit and now it's just what I what I mean it's just I have nobody to ask answer to or ask opinions of and I think it's fun it's very it's it's there's a lot of freedom in it obviously but um yeah, it's it's fucking cool. Dude, do you feel I mean there's something about having a band that feels like you can bounce shit back and forth. Of. Like if I didn't have TJ, mm-hmm. I would be all over the place. I wouldn't, you know, there's like that dynamic there that really really works with us. Right. Is it are you are there people that I mean obviously like I'm sure you guys bounce. I do you to done songs together. Yes, like, I constantly am asking her advice on songs, my butthole. <laughs> I honestly, you want to know what, dude? I honestly think that there's nothing more, there's nothing more beautiful than, than a, a rope. Look, you were, took the I words out of my Tyler's mouth. Ass. Oh my God. Is that, do it, do it, yeah. I, I mean, I literally talked about how I shave, uh, how I shave my asshole. Hey, have, you ever wa- have you ever waxed it? Uh, look, dude. That's I, painful. Dude, I it's did. so painful. I did it one time it on her so guys. Painful. Did you watch him do it? No, she left the room, but I could hear her. I did. Well, I brought him to my person. Yeah, she brought me to her. Wife. So I was like, basically the. You do know. you have to? Okay. Do you want me? Do you want me? To, you want me to show you how? To I do was it? the chaperone. Yeah, I kind of do. Is it like? So this is how I thought it was gonna be. Okay. Like I was gonna walk in and like you know kind of do something like this. Yeah, like you're getting proctologist. <laughs> yeah. She was like, turn over. And I was like, okay. And she was like, I want you to hold your legs up like this. Oh, did he? T- literally, literally, <laughs> no, I was no like this. way. <laughs> So you had to put your that's the opposite of that's literally the opposite of what I thought she was gonna do. I thought you were gonna have to like all fours it. Yeah. You didn't know that? How do you do it? Not like that. What? Yeah, why did wow. they do it differently for you? I didn't know that. I don't know how I I don't there's I, don't, I do not do that. That's how she told me to do it. Okay, so were you, you in a, were you in an alley at the time? I was, yeah. Okay. There's yeah. no Honestly, and, and please don't take this offensively, there is nothing more <laughs> disgusting than thinking about a guy with his legs pulled up and balls dropped yeah. on the floor yeah, yeah. and waxing an asshole that way. In socks. <laughs> just wearing socks. No shoes. That's, a... that's that's like teen people mortifying. Yeah, it's horrible. I wouldn't have been... I, I can barely get a massage because I'm like, I want to talk to... 
them. I and would, she does talk yeah. to you to take your mind off of the pain. So there's what constant. What did you guys talk about? Seriously, movies, uh, nothing, absolutely nothing. Just it was all just bullshit, just to take your mind off. And I knew what she was doing. It was like yeah, just to like, distract me from the pain <laughs> in my asshole. Oh, yeah, it's like when I get a shot, I have to tell the nurse to be like, I have to be like, tell me about your day because I re- I, I, I'm gonna pass out. Right, same thing. Wait, yeah. how, okay, first and last time. No, definitely not. First time, yes. Haven't gone back, but I don't think it'll be my last time. You kind of have inspired me to do it. Try it. Dude. I really do. I do it on the show. I'll do it on the show. Yes. Whoa, I no. will do it on the show. I, I literally will do it on the show. You should, you should, what are you doing? Told you. What? Because there's a lot of stigma around it. And I told Tyler he should be more open about it because I feel like other people... I want mean, to do that. Honestly, it's like scary, kind of. It is scary. It's wildly scary, and it's even more scary that she made you do it like that, dude. I was <laughs> like, "You're joking." There's no way. It was. I was. I would have been like, "Yeah." I would have been like, "That." That's what you want me to do? Because I feel like it's like a side thing, and they lift up the. And then, yeah. No. Not at all. Back to music. Okay. We're with. We're with Feldy. Yeah. How did we digress there? It's it was her. It was dude. Her. It's, it's, her. it's all I don't, her. It's Emo Night Radio. Like yeah. this barely sticks on. One topic. I, need, for, I needed yeah. that too. I was a little stressed out because, first of all, we were late. We were like two minutes late. And let me tell you what, we got Taco Bell on the way here. It's fair. I'm so Ooh. sorry. What'd you get? I got. A, have you heard the grilled cheese burrito? Mm. The new grilled cheese, newish. It's so good. No, I haven't had just, it, dude. It's unbelievable. Didn't want to come here like half alive. Right. Yeah. So I I needed to tell that story just to <laughs> get the, the energy back up in me. I look. I can't eat before I do these things. I can't eat before I go on stage, or else I get bogged down. I I, really? I use food as like a treat at the end af, of my day. Sure. It, yeah. Which I really I get that. Yeah, but you also like you're in shape, so you uh, you're, in, you're in shape. I, I just started going back to the gym. I just started doing push-ups and crunches. So. Nice, dude. Yeah, it's how incredible. many do you do? I do it, and this is the way that Dan told me how to do it. He said, "Don't count, don't count." He said, "This is not bad. It's not bad. It's not a bad thing. I'm not throwing you under the bus. I think that I'm actually complimenting you. I'm um, do it. I don't count because normally I would count in my head. Yeah. I just do it till it really, really hurts, Great. and then I switch, and then I do it the it really hurts. yeah, and it, I continuously. That do is that. not a bad method because if I count, I'll be like, "Sweet, I'll stop before right. I." It actually kind of burns. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I That's, just we are talking. We're not talking about the waxing, still, are we? We haven't stopped talking uh, okay. about the waxing. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just clarify. We haven't. You want to take? You want to take a call? You want to see what these? Yeah. What everybody else says. I really. Are we want, ready for that? Yeah. Do we? Do we talk about enough? No. We, no. We'll go. We'll do a call we'll back. and then we'll circle back. Okay, okay. No. 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 We are. This is as um, long as you guys are here. We're doing it. Okay. Great. Who's on the phone? Emo Sam. Emo Sam. Hey, this is Emo Sam. Yeah, how's it going? What's up, dude? You're here on Emo Night Radio with Tyler. Yeah, hey, Tyler. How's it going? Good, buddy. How are you? Nervous. Doing well. Uh, I just want to say that I love your new songs. Lemon was a awesome hit, and Sick. I love Gravity. Well done on those, man. Well dude, done. Dude, nice. Thanks, bud. That's really, really sweet. Fuck yeah. yeah. Hey, dude. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much for calling, dude. Yeah, for sure. Thanks so much for having me. I'm going to hang up on you now, and then I'm going <laughs> to talk to Tyler. That's <laughs> a nice thing to say. No hey, worries. Mo, Sam, yeah, no worries. Awesome. No worries. Dude, that's oh, great. It's good to talk to you, boys. Hell Sick. yeah, dude. <laughs> no, no, you can't hear. You just said he really like. Really he, lo- he loves it. Lemon, and he Wholesome. loves Gravity. Gravity was the first song that we ever wrote together, me and Femme. It was the what? first day I ever met him. Yeah, the first day we the ever met The first day? Yeah. How, do you guys write little bits, like, during the week? Do you write like little stuff during the week that hasn't really gone any places or do you have like specific verses? Oh yeah, like- well that usually that happened more so in the beginning of our relationship. Um we were very focused on I I just would get I I was recording a lot at my house, demoing and producing stuff at my house of my own and I would always ask her her advice, ask for her advice and get her on a track and we would I would produce some stuff for her and we would just kind of bounce stuff ideas off of each other. So we have like, I don't know, a bunch of songs that are never going to be released because they're sitting on my computer. I honestly feel like that's one of the most beautiful things in the entire world. You, not having something that is shared just between you guys and that nobody will ever, ever hear. I feel like that is a very, very musician thing to do. I've got so many songs that I'll never release. I'll never, all these, like all this stuff that I'll never ever put out in the world. Sure. But yeah. I know I have it and it's really fucking sweet that you guys did that together. Yeah, definitely. Back to you. Okay. <laughs> so I could literally talk about me. Before you came in, honestly, before you came in, I was like, you know, it was just me in front of a microphone. I'm going to talk about my fucking, what's going on with me. 
with lemon, it is way more manicured than the stuff that you were doing before. True. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for noticing. I really noticed, and I really noticed that your vocals, like, I'm going to go ahead and just say are better. Th- yeah, thank you, dude. I appreciate that. They like, definitely, they get better and better. You sound like a singer. Yeah, thanks, dude. And, and It took uh, a while to get there. It's hard. I didn't know. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't take any vocal lessons, and I just screamed a lot when, when, until something clicked one day, and I was like, oh, I think I, f-, and I'm still figuring it out, you know? I'm still not the greatest, but. I'm- well, now it I, I got to tell you it feels like absolute. It feels like full and it feels really like you. Thanks, man. That's and awesome. as opposed to like some of the demos that I think that you sent me I mean, I think we did like a 5-minute interview over the pandemic like fucking like 3 years ago. Yeah, that was all stuff I think I just did at my house. Yeah. I mean, so like what happened what went into like doing lemon what what, what's going into like what's happening next with you? Like what's what is everything? Yeah, dude, it's 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 cool. So lemon is sort of on its own with the discography I'm about to release. Um, and Lemon started because Teen Wolf, the movie, came out. Or, Unfamiliar. It's, so it's a, there, was a, there was a movie back in 1985 with Michael J. Fox. He was the Teen Wolf. They recreated that show. I became the Teen Wolf. Five years later, we did the movie. Which is now. Which is just now. Broke records. I bunch of crazy saw shit. that it broke I, records. I saw that you did post... I'm I'm so unfamiliar. <laughs> I'm so, like it's the, I'm, the, I'm I'm if you, I love it. It's in, I I I like that. It's I'm super I endearing. literally am so unfamiliar, but I Should we watch it right now? I'm sure yeah, it's, that's a good, that's I'm, a good idea. Yeah. Here's the thing. I'm going to do I'm sure it's great. It's it, it's, <laughs> it's good. Sure, I'm sure it's good. It's good. I, I bet it is yeah. good. I mean, you put like it like anything. I feel like as any artist, yeah. like, you put as much into as the things that we put out into the world. Yeah, what's interesting too is that like I got to revisit the character five years later and he's older and all that shit. So it was a very artsy f- sort of thing for me creatively. But when that movie came about, I was like, yes, I'll do it, but give me my g- give me a song in the movie. Hell yeah. It was kind of her idea, I think. She told me to say that. It's my boss over there. I mean, that's um, the way to be. Yeah, it's awesome, dude. So you did, I know you had the end credit. So that was the end credit song. And so it was the only song I've written in thinking of how do I implement this cinematically. You, th- you wrote it thinking about the end of, end of the movie. Did you know where it was going to go? I did. We, at that point we did. Okay, because yeah. I was listening. I, the song is great, dude. It That's really right. is a good song. I feel like you've matured as a songwriter and an artist in, in a big, big way. Just be from the things that I can compare it to. Yeah, right? yeah totally. Thank you. The, I don't know if it's like a... Would it, would it would it be a pre-chorus or a post-chorus of it? But it's such an an incredible part of the song, and I was like, it feels cinematic. It feels huge. It right. feels really big. Is the rest of the stuff that you're doing sound along those lines? It's sort of all over the place, which I really like. So that was another thing about leaving the label that I was on and being on my own as an artist, like not a, not in a band, is that I just had freedom to do whatever the fuck I want. Also. Uh, it's not my breadwinner career, you know. I can have freedom just to fucking put a bunch of different genres on one album, and the fans aren't going to be like, "Well, I know him for this. I know him for this." Mm-hmm. You know, there's like, I have inspiration from Sugar Ray on it, Three Eleven, Comeback Kid, uh, Alkaline Trio, Blink. Obviously, um, it's just a mishmash of like all my favorite artists and music i mean i know i saw your playlist and it's fucking yeah it's, all, it, it's literally <laughs> it's awesome so, and all over the place right. and i was like what the fuck is tyler doing? Like, what <laughs> the fuck is tyler doing but i really like i do uh, kind of want i did kind of want to address that and i think that it's really a cool thing that you're in a place where you can be experimental yeah like it, it is really cool yeah. and it's also everything is really good like it's not like i'm just i'm 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 trying to play a certain genre just because I'm trying to play that genre. It just came out and it was it, it, while we were writing and nothing was really thought out before. I didn't plan anything out for this album. It just kind of, we got in the studio and I was like, I want to write this song today and this song and this song. And, and then it just sort of happened. Like it wasn't, it wasn't um, a conceptualized piece of work. It just, it, all, all the songs are really thought out and really cool and fun and, but it's just. But you the, didn't try and fit it into a no, genre. Not at all, dude. I mean, that's got to be such a freeing thing to be like what you said. This isn't the thing. This isn't your main thing. So right. this is the thing that you can do that you really care about. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm 
very aware and fortunate that I have that luxury. You know, I don't think a lot of artists can do that, you know, because they're sort of pigeonholed in their genre because they don't want to lose their fans that have loved them from this sort of thing that they've been doing for years. And I get to sort of screw around and mess around. But it all fits. It all still sounds like it came from my pop punk roots and punk. And I mean, I know, dude, you threw a fucking gnarly scream and to Lemon. Like, I mean, it's like, like, and Dan was telling me, like, you were in with Zach the other week and you're like, Showing you, you're showing Zach a song. I fucking scream. Like, you yeah. can, like, actually really, really scream. Yeah, it's fun. The first song on the album is a Comeback Kid sort of tribute. Um, and just that whole hardcore scene. Um, just because I've never really gone deep into that world by, or showing people that I can do that, you know, and I've, and I've loved them for years and loved that style. And It is really one of those things where, like, uh, that's always something that I wish that I, it's like when you're in your car and you're like, how loud can I actually, can oh I like God. hit yeah. these things? Can I actually do this shit? Uh-huh. And I mean, it's <laughs> one of the things that I try all of the time and to hear you be able to do it and like hit those things. Like, so I know that you, you were really, really heavily influenced by punk and pop punk, right? Yeah, absolutely. I played a bunch of stories so far for you before you came on because honestly you kind of got me into them. Oh, sick. That's the, awesome. You were the one that got me into them because I've got a bad, I have like a negative connotation with them in my head because when we were at this, like a, we were doing, we were opening up for, I've told this story on here before, but we were opening up for Good Charlotte a long time ago. And we, this was before we really knew what Eamon I was doing. So we were playing a song and Parker came across straight to, stage and unplugged the DJ thing. If it wasn't me, I would have thought it was fucking hilarious. Right, and I still kind of think it's hilarious. <laughs> I have I have a weird thing with them too. You want to hear it? Yes. He un he does he blocked me on Instagram. What? Why? Why? I have no fucking idea. He did that with my fucking one of my tattoo artists as well. I have no idea why. It's really weird. I have never met the dude. I've never uh, met him either. I don't know why he was, <laughs> he blocks me. I found out one day because my brother was like, "Yo, did you see what he posted?" And I was like, "No." And I went to follow. I went to go see his page, and it, it didn't exist. And I was like, "He must have fucking so blocked weird. me." I, yeah, it's a strange <clears throat> thing. He's, he does sound like a like a like a strange dude, but it doesn't stop. Oh, even, I love them. Even with the the thing that they they did. Yeah, I so, can't deny that they're fucking an incredible band. He's fucking talented, dude. Parker Cannon is like. A, a, an anomaly in this world of art, artists and musicians. Have you heard the new band? His new band? It's literally my favorite band right no now. No pressure. It's literally Dude, my favorite band. They unbelievable. Un- incapable of writing a bad song. No, they're so fucking good. And have you seen their live shows? No, I've se- I've seen clips of it, but I also He's like so hard. They're so hardcore. Dude, I just like how they have no social media presence. Yeah, it's they're they're fucking cool. It's it's awesome, it and I like awesome. the fact that you didn't take it personally. They don't follow you, and I all and I was just like, whatever. I mean, I, I like definitely it. took it personally. Okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> but I still love them. Yeah, I mean, I was like, you know what, dude? Like, I, you know, you hear things about people, and I was like, I, I'm not ever gonna, whatever. Until I meet somebody, I can't really pass judgment. But like, mm, the course, only yeah. thing that I have is him unplugging <laughs> yeah. the thing. So if any, I feel like if any other band did that at all, I would uh-huh. be like, fuck them. Yeah, I hate that yeah. band. I'm never listening to them. They, for some reason, I, I, I can't not. I understand. I get it. All right. What are you listening to right now? Uh, honestly, I was listening to, um, I was listening to the Swellers. I have it on my, on my playlist that I sent you. Um, do you know the Swellers? No. They're the sick fucking... Well, dude, we can play... We can do... Why don't we do a cup? We can play a song or... I don't want to... I don't want to spend a ton of time because I know, like, A, we got to... You know, songs take up a minute. Right. But I do want to play some of the playlists that you came here with. Okay, then play... If you do want to do it... Yeah, now, let's do it, dude. Then, then play Bird 3, which is not the Swellers. Okay. <laughs> this is a song from, like, I think 2001. It's It was on, like, Van Wilder soundtrack. What a fantastic time for anything. It really is, dude. I don't know if you've heard this song, but it's called Forgot Your Name, and it's just, it's perfectly represents that time. You'll feel it in your bones, the nostalgia. This is what I wanted to do with you, really, for the most part. I wanted to pick a playlist. I wanted to talk about the songs and why you picked them. Great. It, but we had to, we have to sort of expedite this entire thing. I'm down. But let's do it. Let's play that song. It's so good. Ready? It's not in there. Should I play it on my we phone? have so many other Bird Three songs. But it's Forgot not your one. name is not on there. No, how is it not in there? I don't know. Security probably removed it at the front when they came in. 
Damn, that's the only one I know by them doing things. Oh. Fuck it. What's another song that's on your playlist that the we Swellers, can- uh We have the Swellers. Uh Best I Ever Had. Yeah. Dude, talk about what what's this song? What did what did why'd you put this one on here? So I found this song, I don't remember how. Um, I think it came out in 2011. So this what I love about this song is that in this band specifically, this album, they really so there were pop punk phases. The phase that we fell in love with was the uh, American Pie, Van Wilder, that early 2000, late 90s era of pop punk. That defined who I am. And then there came Story So Far, Knuckle Puck, uh, Neck Deep, um, that newer sort of... We did all, I did all those before you got on mm-hmm. here. Cause that I was world. Like, that's, yes. Real friends. That's, yeah. it, and it's, but it sounds different. It's a different vibe. It's almost more emo, um, more hardcore. And then this band, The Swellers, I feel like are in this time zone... But they really do a good job at maintaining this old school feel. It's re- they're really fucking good. This album is so good. This isn't the best song on their album, but it's still it's something that you like, and you picked it, and yeah. we're playing it on fucking your playlist. You're so gonna love it. You're I'm gonna, gonna let's fucking listen. Let's get to our it. buttholes waxed too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ready? It's it's uh, the Swellers on Emo Night Radio, uh, ladies and gentlemen. That was the Swellers. Um, best I ever had. I think 2011 was when that song came out. And like I said, they really do a good job at capturing. The old vibe of pop of pop punk. I feel like you have to make your voice a little bit lower for radio. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, you got to go like. And now welcome that's back. Like, that's like NPR. Yeah, it's like NPR. Sometimes I'll come and back. That was yeah. the Swellers, best I ever had, and it reminds me of the best sex I ever had back right. in grade school. <laughs> right? Was that, Guess, was that? Was that? Yeah. I blacked out for a yeah. second. Did you have? Is the first time you had sex in grade school? No. Because <laughs> no, I was like, I, I was, I was gonna say that's when I. <laughs> Figured out how to do it. I did. So I was in preschool and we were doing like a nap time, like in, in mm-hmm. the, and they turn off the lights. And I remember a girl and I kissed each other's butts. That was the, wow. It's honestly really sweet. And it really ties around to right now on how you've got the butt thing going. Right, yeah. Dude, we really yeah. are just creatures of like what we grew up with yeah. doing. Dude, I got caught. I got busted playing doctor when I was a little kid. And I remember. Yeah. What do you mean? I don't know. <laughs> okay. I'll, Doesn't I, everybody I, play I, doctor? When I, no, no, no. I'm trying to figure out how to tell this without. Yeah. I understand. I understand. We're not on, we don't need it. We're not on terrestrial. So you're. I understand. That's all you need to say. That's all you need to say. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's not. So <laughs> it was, it, I was, I was the age where people have, you know, like teen, I had Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Those were like my favorite. That was my, the toy that I liked and I played with those. And I had this bed that had, it was like a place you could go under the bed. It was almost like a bunk bed, but it was just a taller bed. Sure. And me and my the girl who was like my neighbor, we would go under there and <laughs> be like, what does that look like? And she would be like, what does that look like? Because we were so young. Mm-hmm. We got fucking in trouble. And I never remember looking up at my parents and her parents and somebody being so tall like I, <laughs> you know like what like cinematically when you're right, like like look a tim up, burton like, kind of yeah thing. it was exactly like that and uh-huh. my that and the reason why i remember the tng and ninja turtles things because that's what was got got taken away from me a video What's game that? or a toy the like actual action figures oh, of dude, that that's horrible it was look it was traumatic and now my kink is dr kink nice it's not a stethoscope or? yeah like the, those uh those uh wooden uh, the tongue, 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 tongue depressors, tongue depressors. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I steal those as many of those as I can from the doctor's office when I go in there. <laughs> Dude, that's my favorite thing about going to the doctor's office. They're like, look at all this steal free shit. Stuff. Yeah, you can take like Q-tips, you can take the tongue depressors, and you have to do it before they like- They also have a whole box of dirty needles that you could just- Take. Mm. Take. They're for you. Yeah, they're for you. Is the thing. <laughs> Dude, they're that, in this like orange bin. I'm pretty sure it says, please take. Every time I'm here, I'm like, what can I steal? <laughs> like it's- That's you everywhere though. Yeah, it oh. is true. They have like a bunch of uh, Emmys or Grammys or something, whatever. Emmys, here. yeah. You can literally just take them if you want to. <laughs> Like, you, like, I mean, like, they're behind glass, but yeah, yeah, but you can do anything you want. <laughs> like, I don't fucking know. What other songs do you have on your playlist? I want to talk about Tyler's playlist. Well, you mentioned a play a song. What when we talked about the Swellers, the Polar Bear Club? Yeah, and I love them. And Dude. they have, they have a song called For Show that sort of hits the same sort of nerve that that last song hits. 
Yeah, it's wild because I looked up the Swellers because I'd never heard of the Swellers, right? Before, I'm, I'm right. sure that is somewhere in passing I yeah. have. And I looked it up and I looked up all the, like, the related artists and I was like, dude, Polar Bear Club, the movie life, uh, uh, we, uh, I'm the Avalanche, uh, yeah. <clears throat> which honestly, that I, I, I only know them because it was one of my ex-girlfriend's favorite bands. So I was mad at him for a while, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, and sure, you have to like that. be mad at that shit. Yeah. So, but okay. Polar bear club. You want to fucking, should we do it? That's not on my playlist. Dude, it's okay. Is that okay? We, yeah, yeah. You just added it. We're dude. good. This is great. We are uh, live on AF with Tyler Posey and Femme. Hello. Do you, you want to call everybody your, your Christian name? Femme Forever. Femme Forever. That's her last name. Is, is your first full name Femily? Um, it could be, dude, at this point. <laughs> Might as well I'll just change it. I thought of that while <laughs> we were walking down to go interview you guys in the car. <laughs> that one right there, you thought you were yeah, holding on to it? Really well, broke. family is like my fan base's name. Is it really? Cool. We're the family. <laughs> yeah. Well, then guess what? It works. I did it. I'm you, doing the you, right thing. You did it, yeah. Visionary right there. <laughs> Vision is scary. It's <laughs> Polar Bear Club on Emo Night Radio. Welcome back to the show. It's Morgan, Tyler, Cameron. Yep. And uh, that was uh, Polar Bear Club for uh, show. <laughs> Lower and less goofy. Fuck, really? Mm -hmm. I felt like that was really it. Lower and less goofy. And that was the Polar Bear Show. Uh, it's still goofy. Yeah. No, no, no. That was it's actually... I, I, I'm such an actor, but you don't know that. I don't... I literally don't know. I do... <laughs> like, I'm aware of it. Like, I'm not completely in the dark. The only thing you've ever seen me act in was the Western Emo Night. Which was fantastic. Advertisement we did. So long ago, yeah. dude. Like, so, we've known each other for so long, and yeah. that's how I know you. Right. Is the thing. Like, are you, so we were just talking, I'm not going to bring up what, what we were just talking about, but, like, are fans of yours really invested in in the music endeavor? Definitely. The diehards, for sure. And I think most, the majority of them have no idea that I even do that because I'm not the best at promoting my music. Sometimes I'll go through bouts of like being super down. I'm like, okay, I want, I want mm -hmm. this to get the love that it deserves. Um, but then for the most part, I'm just like, I, I don't want to feel desperate. So I just like post a little bit, you know, but I, I think that um, the people who, who know are super stoked about it and, and are just the sweetest, most loyal kids ever. And, and, uh, and there's a lot of people who, like you, only know my music, which I think is really endearing because most of the time it's the acting side who introduces the music to the kids, the fans. I don't know, they're not all kids anymore. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah. I mean, do, do, cause that's, tr that's truly like how I, I, I know you and as a friend, like it's been, yeah, and right. it's been, I, you know, we were just talking earlier, uh, like during the, during the song that like, I, I was like, do you? have people that are like like it's got to be a strange thing to be there's a it's got to be a weird it's got to be a weird thing yeah at this point it's like you got to be really careful like because people can cancel you and people will find yeah. anything to hate you for and someone someone like had a whole youtube dedicated to me being in the illuminati <laughs> which i am Obviously, <laughs> but they didn't need to know that. Yeah, which is what, dude. Of of course, that's how you got into Amazon exactly. today. Yeah. If you weren't, there would be no way they would have fucking let you in. Right, dude. Do you ever like? Do, is it ever like? Is it ever like hard to 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 deal with that? Like, because when I know when people are fucking like, dude, we get so much shit. Oh, of course, mm -hmm. yeah. like, and all we're doing is trying to like put out yeah. things that we love and make have people enjoy mm -hmm. shit and like obviously i'm a hater on some stuff too right we all are like it's just the, the natural thing but i would never go online and be like this yeah. the only things that i do online are like positive reinfo like right. yelp reviews all of my yelp reviews are like five Mine too. <laughs> all my all my airbnbs you gotta we gotta read the, some of the the reviews i leave they're fucking <laughs> immaculate like paragraphs of being oh, yeah. like super fucking good. Oh, yeah, yeah, I just like I I don't find I I read this article and this is pretty self-explanatory, and I you know obviously I think everybody knows it, but people spend it was nice to see a number on it that people spend eight to thirteen percent more time online on things that they hate sure, as opposed yeah. to things that they really like, right. which I think says something about everything. But I mean, like, do you get are are the are your fans like? there for the ride with music like are they like excited about what's to come like do you get a lot of 
do you get a lot of people asking you like when things are coming out music wise as yeah, opposed definitely. to acting? Yeah, and it's 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 tough to sort of like regulate it because I have over six million, you know. So like even a small percentage it feels like a little bit, but it's still like a few thousand kids are like, we want to hear the next song. We want to hear the next album. Like, when's this coming out? Like, are you touring? I get a lot that I get that question asked a lot. Like, when are you touring? Cause you did do a tour. You did do a, like, would you do one or two tours? The last tour I've done probably like four or five tours. My okay, whole, my whole, know, my whole life. But this was before Tyler Posey. Got it. Mm. So you only know that. I just know that. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, isn't it the most exciting thing to go on your first tour and you think it's like the, you're like I made it like I like it's like oh and you can only think about being on tour and you're like all what all of the artists that you grew up listening to you're like this is what they're experiencing and now I'm doing that yeah I always loved it and I loved earning it because like I was always in the position where I could have gotten a bus I right. could have done it the right way but not the right way but the expensive way mm -hmm. you know but I never have yet to do that I always rent a van I always rent a little RV and I'm just blasting down this fucking freeway in Wyoming at like four in the morning, <laughs> dodging deer while the van is held together by duct tape. And I'm like with my friends, and I'm always the one driving for like 12 plus hours. And I just love earning that because that's the shit that we saw in documentaries when I was yeah. a kid. And that's, I always just wanted that, you know, and at some point I'm sure I'll want to do the bus and, sh you know, I see. I think that is endearing. Like, I, I find that really, really endearing. I mean, I feel like most people in your position would just be, like, straight to doing the thing that is most comfortable where you're like, right. I want to experience this. I need to do this to grow as an... I feel like it helps you grow as an artist. Absolutely, dude. Yeah. So, so for people that are listening and for people that are fans of your music, because this is really what this is about. I, I, I really want to stick to that. Thank you. What's planned? What, what give me all of the shit that's coming up? Yeah, I've got so album coming out May 26th. It's called Unravel. The last song of the album is called Unravel. It's a really fucking great song. You're going to love it. It's so this one to me screams the most cinematic out of out of all of them. It just it's this it crescendos and has this beautiful climax and you're orgasming the same time that the song <laughs> is and it's really really cool um I'm, I'm doing two more singles so all together I'll, I'll drop four singles um one of those singles we wrote in hawaii my producer was supposed to go with his ex to hawaii he's like hey man we broke up do you want to come with me and i was like absolutely and so i brought fem family and uh we wrote some sick songs in Hawaii. You can hear the beach. It's like this oh, three, cool. 311 vibe. Um, one of the songs, and then we took another trip to Big Bear, right on the lake, and you can hear the lake in one of the songs. Um, did you keep all that stuff in? Like, you're, it, yeah. are you going to keep all it? Like, oh, did yeah. you did you record them there on on like your phone? Oh, like, how no, did you no, do we those? Were, we our Airbnbs were so fucking close to the ocean. That it just bleeds through the microphone, which is so cool. It's so fucking it's, cool. It's really Dude, cool. What a moment and what a memory to like have that. I I I love that. Those are the things to me that make songs really really special. Yeah, this like, one. This one. These are special songs too, for sure. The the one that I wrote in Big Bear. So we went to Big Bear. I had like maybe seven or eight or nine or whatever songs planned that we wanted to record. Then we got there and it was. Last year around November, so it was close to Christmas. We were like lighting fires. I was waking up every morning and making us fucking little breakfast sandwiches. And, and we were watching Christmas movies and Teen Wolf at night. And it was just me and my producer, who's Matt Malpass. He's one of my best friends. And we just had the greatest time ever. And then I got this inspiration that I wanted this like acoustic kind of chill song on the record. And I didn't, hadn't had that yet. And, um, and I, the first couple lines I wrote, I was like, oh, this is about my mom for sure. And I just kept writing it and it just became this beautiful crescendo of like strings and a cacophony of i'm using a lot of big words you really <laughs> are i'm following along though dude i have a reading level of like sixth seventh grade so i'm Same, good to go i'm a little bit less than that but so i think we learned cacophony in like maybe fourth grade i remember that for sure it honestly makes you sound smart i feel pretty pretty intelligent right now so okay i i, I want to ask like nine when, inches <laughs> It's a, it's a joke. It's it's twenty. It's not. I'm feel now. I feel bad now. <laughs> now I now I feel bad again. I, I don't have a wax asshole, and I've got. <laughs> no, 
I don't know. It's that wasn't a, true. I didn't. I was joking. I shouldn't six, have said that. Six on a good day. Same, dude. Honestly, same. Like on a good day. It's same. Five on a good. Who the same, fuck dude? Else? I, I want to. So, like, when you are writing these songs, are you bringing like a mobile studio with you? Or are yes. you just do? Okay. Yeah. So we, my producer Matt, brought his. Uh, audio interface. I brought mine, which is a uh, Universal Audio. Is that what it's called? The UA. Um, and we brought guitars, bass. He has all of his little compressors and shit like that, and and little keyboard. And that was it. That's all we needed. That's all you need that's nowadays. Really, it's that's fucking literally insane. all you need. It's all you need. Like it's not. You don't need a huge mixing board. Um, we recorded vocals in the living room and they sound great. Like you don't, you don't need it to be this closed off little, he had this little sort of a dome that sits around the microphone. Um, but it was all on the go pretty much a lot of the songs and, and they came out fucking awesome and it does add this different vibe. And then when you listen to it, it reminds you of being there and it's, it's really cool. I think really cool. uh, Some of my favorite albums of all time, you can tell, you can feel imperfections in them. Oh yeah, and I and I think that what you're describing, at least with this album, having those things in there and keeping those things in there makes for a timeless album. And I feel like people with Lizard listening to it will really feel like that they are there with you while this is happening. Yeah, I so. I am not. You know, I'm. There's certain things that I love that are like overproduced. Mm-hmm. Obviously, right? Like there's certain songs that I love that are like. I love, like, like you know, we were Zach was here, you know, earlier, and I'm, I always just bullshit with him. I like all the shit that he listens to as well. But like, there's a certain s- special quality about how you're describing what you are doing. Yeah, I, and I really am excited for this album. May what? Let's do it again. Twenty sixth, <laughs> unravel. Now say it again. May tw- my album, Tyler Posey's album, comes out first album. Unravel on May 26th. Okay, now do it backwards. <laughs> Penis. I think we, dude, I think we, we, have, to, we have to dip, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay, let's play. I want to play one of your songs. Okay, yeah. There's a song on the on the playlist called Gravity. It. It's by John Mayer. Uh, That's my favorite John Mayer song. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah, it's like one of the only John Mayer songs I know, and I love that same, song. Same, It's like well, the only one I know. Well, this is a cover of that. It's not. It's not. It's, not. <laughs> it's the first song Fem and I wrote. Okay, skip it. Let's play the John Mayer version. <laughs> okay, so what? It's the first song that Fem and I wrote. And we fell in love. I don't know. Am I allowed to say that? Or is that not cool? It is cool. There's literally nothing cooler than that. By the way, I oh. assisted in writing. I did not. That's true. I actually, with, I, I, I had this most of this song written before. Yeah, I helped, you know, the rough edges. You killed it. I feel like I've left you out a little bit okay, on I'm this, and and I and I and what I want to I want to ask both of you guys this question, like as as the last, as sort of the last, wrap this up, and then we're gonna plug your album f- several more times. <laughs> what now that you guys are together, like you guys are together, I found at least for me writing songs, it's so much easier to write songs when I'm fucking bombed. Oh, and I think so easy. That goes that goes like with every like all art is like kind of comes from that. Yeah. And now I you know watching you guys like you're happy. You're right. like very 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 happy. Like what what like subject matter is like went into this album? Like because I mean you guys are fucking I mean I know that you probably don't get along 100% of the times so you have small fights and you do all this shit regular relationship stuff. But I don't feel, I feel like there's like straight up just love. Yeah, it's really cool. It's special. It's so deep, dude. Yeah. I can't even begin to explain it. But I think when you don't have like, and, and don't get me wrong, there's songs on here that have to do with things with us. But I think, I don't want to speak for you, but I do think when you take the love aspect out, shit gets really heavy. Because then you really have to look at your life and look at like how dark it is. And that goes back to family shit. That goes back to like people dying, people around you not doing the right things. I mean, it's like a lot heavier than just I'm in love, but now I'm heartbroken. Like, that's cool. That's a story that's like forever relatable. We have many songs about that, but like shit gets darker when it's not just about that. And I think that's what his project really 
Yeah, Listen there's, to. there's, yeah. I mean, I also have songs about grabbing my dick. Like it's, <laughs> it's my literally, it's and all, that. it's all like, over the place. Uh, that's fucking but so, in relation to going dark. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You do have to dig a little deeper and 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 find the nuances of, and you do end up opening a new box of shit where you're like, oh, whoa, there's this whole other element when you do take out like being heartbroken because that's you know the main focus of writing a, a a sad song or when you're when you're upset, it's easier to write those mm-hmm. types of songs. But when you take that out, you got to dig deep to sobriety, to why I got sober, to family issues, to f- insecurities, and it's it does uh, it, it's really cool. It's 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 a it's a therapeutic, I guess. I, I kind of think that's cliche to, for people to it's say not. but it is it is a little therapeutic to kind of dive deep and then and then you get some fucking funny songs like there's like it's just it's all good it, i think that it speaks volumes for your personality and knowing you as a person i i think that that is i think it's fucking awesome I, i'm i'm as a friend i'm really proud of you i'm really proud Thanks, of man. you for like doing this by yourself it's scary it's got to be like a scary step to do that it's interesting for sure same though, like I'm super proud of you. No, 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 I, not about me. We already went around and did like the whole thing. It's true though. I made everybody in here say something nice about me before you That's came true. in. That's true. That is true. Yeah. I, I, this is this is your thing. I feel like we haven't touched on anything, and, and I have me back. I would. Lo- I want. I want, I want, so I want you to come back. Yeah. I want to actually. And not on Zach Sang show, dude. I only want to do this. Show. Fuck Zach. <laughs> fuck. Fuck, fuck Zach. beautiful oh, people. Fuck you, beautiful no, people. Is. And I'm like, that's rude. <laughs> no, we love. We Zach. love Zach. <laughs> we love- I mean, I know the name because he's a good he's, dude. But yeah. But I want to have you back. We I really barely want touched to. on. I really, really want ba- to. Barely touched on anything, and and I we barely touched on playing these songs, and that was the plan. But obviously, things get in the way, and I feel like we made the best out of it. Absolutely, yeah. I want more. I'm excited for more. One more time, album. Unravel May 26, 2023. Sixteen songs. Damn. It's a fuckload of songs, dude. That's right, dude. Got to go heavy. Got to go big. I literally have to stop talking, or else we're gonna go. Like Cam's gonna be in trouble. He has to go somewhere. <laughs> Thank you so much I for coming you. on. I love you too, Thank fam. You. Thank you so Thanks, much fam. for being here, you guys. I- I can't tell you how much I love you, and I'm really excited for you. Thank you, dude. The first song that Femme and Tyler ever wrote together, it's Gravity, Emo Night Radio.